All right, everybody, thank you for joining us today. My name is Greg Wadley. I'm the program manager with uh, CTC and Associates. This is a Clear Roads webinar. Uh, we are, this webinar is for a project uh, out of year 12, snowplow operator and supervisor training. The principal investigator is Jim Broadhouse out of the University of Minnesota. And uh, these webinars are part of our final deliverables for every Clear Roads project. After this project, uh, or after this webinar is complete, we're currently recording it so that uh, we will go ahead and post it on the Clear Roads website on the project page. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Professor Jim Grothaus, who is, like I said, leading this project, and he's going to carry us through this presentation. Jim? Thank you, Greg and Clear Road members for joining us today, and thank you for the introduction. I will correct you right off the bat. I am not a professor, but I, I'm humbled by you saying that, but I am not a professor here at the university. I, I, am, I do work here at the university at the Center for Transportation Studies. This morning, I'm joined uh, by Ann Johnson. Say hi, Ann. Good morning, everybody. Ann Johnson and I have worked on the back end of this project, putting together all the materials from a, a teaching standpoint. Uh, Connie Fortin, who was a, a, a great resource and asset to us at the beginning of the project, um, was unable to join us today. She has, a, I believe, a, a family vacation with um, some significant anniversary that she's celebrating. Uh, Connie was uh, the person that a lot of you interacted with at the front end of the development of all this technical information. But again, thank you for having us, and uh, we'll jump into our uh, presentation. Today's agenda will include the following information. We're going to discuss the project outcomes, get into a little bit about the project development, how the modules were developed. We're going to talk about the all the separate parts of the modules, the different components that make up all these modules. Explain to you about a pilot presentation that we did on four of these modules at a fall maintenance expo here in the state of Minnesota back in October. I have a couple slides on lessons learned from this project, and then a couple slides on other ideas that we might want to think about or that Clear Roads might want to think about regarding how to uh, continually share this information with the uh, 34 states that are part of the Clear Roads community. Just a recap on who helped uh, put this project together. Uh, there's myself. I work with the uh, University of Minnesota and I'm also part of the Minnesota Local Technical Assistance Program. We had Connie Fortin, who's the owner of Fortin Consulting, Ann Johnson, who owns Professional Engineering Services, and she's also an adjunct professor here at the University of Minnesota, and she works with, uh, with the Minnesota LTAP program. Part of our team that I don't think they were ever part of any of our phone calls, but they were part of the review process and putting things together were two retired MnDOT maintenance supervisors. One was Woody Woodruff and the other was Norm Ashfeld. And the last part about this, the last bullet I wanted to raise everybody's awareness to is uh, University of Minnesota students. When projects come to the university, or for that matter, any academic institution, we always get a chance to expose student workers to working on these type of technical products, and then ultimately, at the end of the day, we're helping grow the workforce moving forward. So we've, edu we've had a variety of students you know, review stuff, put stuff into PowerPoint, look at stuff, share information, and uh, that is just another outcome that uh, that research and educational products that this happened. You know, you're, we are, we have a way to educate the, the younger workforce and get them um, up to speed on what topics are out there in the transportation world. So at the end of the day, when we're finished with this, there's going to be 22 winter maintenance training modules that were developed, and we will talk at the end about how we're going to transfer all the files accurately and appropriately over to clear roads. Uh, we, we, we can talk about that at the end of this, but that's a, a question that we have is how do we get the final documents to the group, to Greg and clear roads so they can own and manage them moving forward. Just a brief recap on the topics that were covered. Most of you online should uh, be familiar with these, but if you're not, we're going to quickly step through them. Uh, we have 22 modules. They go from plowing to truck operations, spreading, material use, pre-wetting, brand production, de-icing and anti-icing plus de-icing and anti-icing management policies, level of service. We dive into the science behind 
freeze point depressions and ice formation. We bring up to speed people to speed on environmental issues. We get into drift control, other weather issues, avalanche management, which I think was one of my favorites regarding just the video and photos that come with that and, and just the challenge that has for a, a transportation worker. Bridge frost safety. We have getting ready for winter, which was a, a new add-on at the end of this project. We have a driver's education model module. And then we have record keeping. And record keeping, we have actually, actually as a standalone module, but we have also incorporated that into all of the other modules where appropriate. And I believe of the 21 standalone modules, maybe 18 of them have record keeping in them. There were just some modules that did not have, see a need for record keeping. And uh, we'll talk about those later if, if that comes up. A little bit more about some outcomes of the project. For those that uh, don't recall, we have three levels of training for module. There is the entry level plow driver or the person that's just coming into the job. We have uh, the experienced plow drivers. Then we also have the supervisors. Some other, I think, eventual audiences that might come to play is um, mechanics. Might, be, might, might find these uh, trainings useful as well as uh, other supervisors and even potential policy makers. I think there's a lot of things here that mm -hmm. could be shared and, and put into other trainings or other presentations that are given across the, the U.S. that would be um, beneficial to other audiences besides these three. There's a detailed instructional booklet for each of the modules that gets into how to use the module, how, what to say at certain slides, how to clump slides together. We have an evaluation process that includes uh, five different steps. Um, number one is we have a pre-assessment test, or we just call it a pre-assessment, so we don't write, say the word test because we don't want to scare off some of the attendees. We have the pre-assessment key, so the answer key for that. We have a final assessment, the final assessment key, and then we also have a student evaluation that is available as part of each module, and that allows the instructor to give us to hand us out and kind of get some feedback on what was covered. You know, we're we covering the right things in each module, and what could be added on for future training for your specific agency. Most of the modules include photos, some video. There's uh, examples of policies. There's different charts and graphs, and a variety of other tables and documents that were um, that were reviewed and, and shared and, and added into each of these modules. I'd like to highlight that one of the bigger things is all of the modules will come with, uh, there's seven files, there's a PowerPoint file, and there's six supporting Word documents, and you will be, those will be shared with the Clear Roads, and obviously, everybody will have the ability to customize the material to fit their agency, their training needs, and, and what's expected in their state. And this was kind of a challenge as we put together the project. You know, how generic do you make these training materials or how specific do you make them? And we'll show you a couple examples as we move forward that will illustrate how the instructor can see the PowerPoint slide, we have some hints on the slides regarding how to use the slide and where the people should insert their stuff to make the slides and modules more um, applicable to their state or county or city or agency. Mm -hmm. Last three bullets are just, I'm kind of a math guy, engineer background, I kind of like to add things up. And I think we have approximately uh, 2,600 minutes of training materials. So what that is is uh, we have each module, you know, some modules are 90 minutes to 150 minutes long. That's our, that's our estimate on how long it should take to do the slides, uh, which then translates into 42 hours of potential training materials. Um, that could lead into a very nice uh, two or three day conference or a two or three day pre-winter meeting. But again, as you all know, there's lots of material here that can be adapted and sifted through and shared with your agency again. Finally, it comes out to about 1,300 different presentation slides. There's about 60 slides with 
again, videos and photos and whatnot that are covered over those 22 different modules. So we have close to 1,300 different presentation slides. Some of them are repetitive, but they're, nonetheless, there's a lot of slides and there's a lot of uh, a lot of storage regarding the size of the files. The files are quite big, um, and uh, they're filled with great information. A little bit about the project development. We reviewed initially. We started off one of the first things that was listed in the work plan was to review the appropriate reference materials that was given to us by Clear Roads. And Connie Fortin, if she was here, this is where she would dive into, you know, what she did to gather all this information. Clear Roads has been around for a long time. A lot of information has been developed and researched and published. So we went through those materials. We uh, did a review of the ASHTO's computer-based training modules. Uh, we, we dove into other Clear Roads research that was available. And I know Connie spent numerous hours and times, and I know many of you on the phone with us today um, were very responsive and very um, active in working with her to uh, give feedback on the different modules from a technical content. And uh, just can't thank her enough for the time that she put into doing this, and I really can't thank you guys enough for the responses that you gave to her over the last almost two years now of, of putting this stuff together. Um, as, you, as you'll see, there's 22, again, modules, and there's just lots of information. It just takes a lot of time to put all this stuff together. Other internet researches were conducted to add value to these different modules, as well as I know there were some conduct phone and email interviews as well were um, used to gather all the technical information. All of that stuff was uh, lumped together. All that technical information was lumped together into the slides that, that will be given to Clear Roads. And, and that was the main part of what Connie did. And because of her background and her knowledge of the states and the environmental laws and whatnot, she was able to put together some really rich content that helped us uh, frame and kind of become the backbone of what each of these modules are. Moving in, I'm, I'll turn it over here to, uh, to Ann, but I want to explain a little bit about Ann Johnson and kind of the role that she played in this project. She's going to really dive into kind of the different module components and what they are, kind of the purpose of them, and, and how they could be used, and how they should be used. Um, and again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, webinar, she is the owner of Professional Engineering Services here in the state of Minnesota, and she also has worked in the construction management part of the University of Minnesota. She's an adjunct professor with civil engineering, and she has probably 20 some years of experience of putting together training materials and teaching, uh, teaching the uh, young workforce, and also she does a lot of continuing ed classes with the Minnesota DOT. So she was able to use her knowledge of, these, of this audience and her knowledge of putting together training materials to, uh, to put together this. So she'll walk through some more slides here regarding these things that you'll see in each training module. So with that, Ann, the floor is yours. All right. Thanks, Jim. So again, uh, my role on this project was not so much as a technical expert. Uh, Connie certainly filled that role, but more as the teaching expert who took Connie's really great information and then packaged it into a product that can be used by people with a varying amount of teaching experience or even confidence, really. We wanted anybody who had a supervisory position or duties to be able to pick up any one of these modules take a little bit of time going through the instructional booklet, go through the slides, and really be able to effectively communicate this information in a variety of ways. So some of those ways um, we'll talk about in a few minutes, but they might include things like uh, a brown bag lunch, a conference presentation, a getting ready for winter seminar, or, or anything like that. So we tried to make it broad enough to be very useful, but also not so broad as to be uh, not uh, not have enough content in it. So, as Jim said, each one of the 22 modules will have these three components. The first one being the PowerPoint presentation, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Secondly, we have the evaluations. Uh, coming from the university background, I know many times we have to measure learning in order to justify um, the money that we're given for different programs. So if that's important to an agency, we're able to 
um, provide them with the tools for pre-assessment and then post-assessment to show that some learning has taken place. Also important are things like student evaluations where we hope that um, presenters can get really valuable information on what their staff are looking for for additional training, but also how this training might have been especially important to them. So the evaluations folder is separate. And then lastly, there's this teaching guide that we call the instructional booklet that describes each module, uh, has a very detailed outline of each of the slides contained in the module, but then mo most importantly, gives insight for each of the uh, presenters on what they might want to talk about for each one of those slides. So firstly, Jim, how do you advance this? You do it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, so first, the PowerPoint contains facilitator notes that are included to help each, in each instructor, and I've shown a few examples here. So Jim, if you go to the next one. All right, so for example, this is the first slide in all of the um, modules that really starts to tell the presenter what they're in for. So we structured these slides to be appropriate for any level of uh, maintenance staff, including entry level, experience, or supervisory. And they, this key, as you guys already know, because you've seen these, uh, shows up in the upper right hand corner of each slide. It's important that the presenters not delete slides, so we have language not only here, but also in the presentation notes, which tell the uh, instructor just to hide things. And then as they go through each slide that's appropriate for an individual audience may be shown, can be edited, can be customized, or can be hidden altogether. Um, throughout each one of the modules, we also include test questions. Some of them are seemingly pretty easy, but they serve a very good purpose. As an instructor with adult uh, learners, I try to make my class as interactive as possible, and that was our goal on these as well. So these test slides are sprinkled throughout, and we tell the presenters they can use them or not, but they really serve a variety of reasons or a variety of purposes. Number one, they can be used as kind of a stop and check mark for a presenter to say, okay, here's our first question, what do you think? And kind of use it as a discussion tool. It can um, be used later on, as I mentioned, in the pre and post test evaluation, or it can simply be used to break up the class and maybe have people check in or do some self-examination. So, A couple of things on that too I wanna to add. There are a variety of polling applications that are out there now that can be downloaded to people's phones. We use those in some of our training classes right now where you can set up questions, you can ask people to answer the question, they can answer via a text through this polling app that then is linked to the computer that then is showed up on the screen. So you then could show, um, it'll show the different responses to these different questions. So one way to, to give these pre-assessment test questions is via the, you know, the old-fashioned way of a pen and paper, or you also could upgrade and use some type of polling app or testing app that are out there that's out there for free for those to use. Or they can choose to use them not at all. Yep. So we give very explicit directions on how they can be hidden. Again, for, you know, a brown bag session, maybe you don't want to stop and have questions like this, or maybe that would be intimidating. Uh, and certainly it's very easy to hide a slide in PowerPoint. So here's an example, just a true or false question. Uh, Short-term forecasts are good for general planning for the season. It's kind of a no-brainer, but it would um, allow you to talk about um, long-term forecasts or how this might fit into an individual uh, program's objectives. So just have an example in there. Secondly, we have presenter notes. Uh, presented all or distributed throughout each one of the module slides as appropriate. So these were meant to be big and boxy and point out to even the most novice presenter that this is something I don't want to leave up during my presentation. And they serve as notes to the presenter. So not only are they shown, this is an example of one of the slides. So you can see it's a big yellow boxy slide. Not only are they shown here, 
But if I were able to pull up this slide and show you the notes down below, they also have additional information on how the presenter can use this slide. And then always it says, delete this yellow box before making presentation. And we give in information uh, in the introductory part of the PowerPoint that tells people how to delete something. So I think these will be really effective. If people don't want to do this, there's also examples or there's also language in the slide that says um, how to hide it. So here's another example and another. So I just put in a few examples here to show you how, again, we have Here's an example of an RWIS. A presenter could choose to leave this in here, or maybe um, they have their own. Both Connie and I thought it was va valuable enough that we put really good examples in, so that if somebody, let's say you have a very small truck station or something, you just don't have access to these things, you could still show them as an example. So they actually serve two purposes. Then at the end of each module, we have um, a separate area where Additional resources for each individual content module are given. These really help to supplement the course. We also outline these in the instructional booklet so that instructors know where to find them. Um, they might be helpful to the instructor as kind of the pre-work to developing some information or delivering some content, but they also might be helpful during the class itself. So we provide that. And you can see here we have quite a few links to um, live internet stuff. As of right now, we've tested all those links, and uh, anything that you see like that is dependent on the instructor having live internet access, which we also tell them in the beginning of the uh, presentation. We also let them know that some of this stuff has sound, so if they're choosing to watch a video or something like that, then they would have to watch, um, they would have to have a sound system connected. So what Jim is showing. Oh, so Jim is now uh, exited out of the PowerPoint just to show you what some of our additional information looks like. So this is an instructional booklet for the de-icing module. And as you can see, it gives the presenter an idea, it tells them how many slides there are, it says approximately how long. We went with a kind of a standard that we use here at the university on a certain number of minutes per slide, and then I would run through them practicing. So we say this one will take about two hours. Then over on the right, you can see Jim has shown that for each individual slide, we have kind of supplementary information that they might want to talk about. I have taught a lot of classes just like this on a variety of maintenance topics, and I know, man, if I had this in front of me for every class I taught, that would make it very easy to prepare. That really was our goal here, is making things be non-intimidating. Uh, we wanted people to feel like they were well prepared and comfortable at any level of teaching experience. And so uh, I think we've done a good job of really providing some additional information. So that's the instructional booklet. And then uh, I don't know if you want to pull up a pretest or anything like that. We can certainly do that. So Jim will show you here how in the de-icing unit um, we have a folder called evaluations and here would be the pre-test or the pre-assessment. We tried to take the word test out because oftentimes people get nervous when they think they're being told that, that a test is required. Again, this would be something you might want to use just as a discussion tool or even as a measurement tool. So there's a pre-assessment, then there's a pre-assessment key which would give you the answers and then last but not least there's a de-icing. Um, student evaluation. So I love to get evaluations at the end of my classes, both to know how things might be helpful, but also to know what I might want to cover in the next time that I teach that class. So those are the different uh, components of each one of the modules. And I think that's where my section ends. Great. Thanks, Ann, for that. So the next thing I want to get into is pilot presentations. It was part of the work plan or contract as an optional thing to do some uh, pilot presentations for a clear roads um, state. Uh, then that was optional and we did not do that. However, we had the opportunity to share this information at the 2016 
Fall Maintenance Expo. The event is hosted in Minnesota here every year. Approximately 1,500 uh, highway maintenance workers come to St. Cloud, Minnesota over two days to uh, exchange information on different technologies. We have a outdoor vendor display of 100 plus vendors showing off all types of equipment, all the way from a small piece to a large piece. And we have indoor vendors, but we also have educational sessions that happen throughout the morning and up until the lunchtime meal. So during that event, we have uh, concurrent sessions. One of the tracks, or the concurrent tracks, was um, dedicated to sharing information from these uh, modules, and we wanted to do that to get some feedback from the uh, from the participants. The four modules that we chose were uh, plowing procedures, truck operations, spreaders, and material material use. Uh, the typical audience that was uh, at the event this year was uh, your plow drivers or your laborers. And as far as the experience level, I would have to imagine that it was all the way from uh, one year to 35 years of experience. Wide variety. A, that attends the whole overall event, but B, that actually came into our uh, session. Uh, we had very, very positive turnout for the sessions. We had anywhere from 20 people which I think was the lowest, and that was one of the three, but the other three presentations we had close to 50 or more. So okay. the average was probably closer to about 40 to 50 people that were in each of these sessions. Uh, Ann Johnson, as well as uh, Kathy Schaefer from our Circuit Training Assistance Program, who is our, a, a trainer here in Minnesota, shared the information with the audience, and each session was um, 45 minutes in length. Even though some of the modules were projected to be 120 minutes, they pared down the information accordingly to fit the 45 minute uh, time slot. So you can easily take all these modules and pare them down to fit. So I wanted to add a few things. So this pilot was not just a pilot of presenting the information. It was a pilot of how would this um, information transfer happen. So I met with Kathy Schaefer, who, as Jim says, is one of our LTAP instructors, and I told her exactly, I mean, she, she had the benefit of a face-to-face -face meeting with me, but I told her exactly what we hope to get out of these modules. I said, here are four modules. You are only allowed 45 minutes, which is what we were allowed by the planners, and see what you can do with this raw information and really customize it for the people in the audience who will be from Minnesota. And I'll be there to introduce it and hand out evaluations, but I didn't help her at all other than that. And so we were able to test both the content of the information, but also got really favorable feedback from Kathy about how great it was to have this kind of foundation of information that she could use and customize for what she really wanted to communicate. So I'm going to walk through each of the four presentations, give you some stats from what came out of them. First one, following procedures, 79 people in that room. So 79 people filled in this small sign shop, very crowded. Uh, we had great turnout regarding people that gave uh, evaluations back to us of 64. We had a variety of questions that we asked, so I'm only, only going to focus on four of them. Uh, there was a scale of one to five, one being low, five being the high. The question was, was the presentation covered? to cover the promised objectives that we laid out at the beginning. And we had a favorable response of 4.36. Question two, was the presentation interesting and well organized? Uh, again, we had another favorable, favorable um, response of 4.34. Moved into question three. Uh, how would you rate your understanding on this topic before today? This is a place where we really want to get an idea people were um, learning something during the um, during this short 45 minutes. And we had a, a rate, a response here of 3.89, so almost four, which is kind of to be expected. And then it, it increased, we asked them that question as well, how would you rate your understanding after today? And it showed an increase of uh, about a half a percent, you know, which is a half a point, I should say. And then we also asked the questions, you know, what were, Based on what you heard in that module, what were the most uh, needed topics that were discussed 
And uh, the topics that came up were uh, one person plowing, plow configurations, plowing speeds, spreading speeds, plowing in a whiteout, tandem plowing, et cetera. So those are things that are covered, but they are also things that people felt were most needed. So, so it kind of confirmed that we were covering the appropriate topics for, the, for this audience. Moving on, we got into truck operations. So you can see the next session we dipped by about 11 participants. So down to 68 participants were in the classroom that day for that 45 minutes. Again, 47 evaluations. Uh, very similar uh, responses regarding the uh, promise of delivering on the objectives as well as, uh, you know, was this material organized? That was good to see. And then we got to ask them, um, had what were they learning beforehand? What did they learn after this? And again, you can see a half, a, about a quarter of a point increase. I know this is um, evaluations. Some of these people could just write fives or fours. I know there's some inaccuracy in here, but this is kind of the closest thing that we have to kind of getting a sense from the audience, you know, are we going in the right direction with these modules? Again, topics that were most needed was, you know, cleaning your trucks, operator certification for plow configurations, pre and post test operation checks. So again, we were kind of, uh, those are things that are covered, as well as what could be covered in future training. A spreader module, uh, 21 participants. I'm not quite sure why 21 people were there, but uh, it might have been conflicting with the demonstration that was going on outside, or there might have been um, some good food being served during break. But nonetheless, we had 21 people, 17 um, evaluated us, and again, we had this uh, close to four and a half rating regarding what was covered, and was it everything organized? Um, and then we had another uh, quarter point increase regarding learning your information from before today until after that presentation. Things that are needed again were again we're on target with calibration, spreading types, delivery systems, spreader speeds, etc. Last one we did on material use. We had 45 people. We were coming to the end of the the morning session, so the numbers were a little bit lower again. 29 evaluated us. Again, we're in that four and a half point range regarding are we promising that what we said we would deliver? Is the, is the material information null and is it organized well? And again, you can see about a quarter of a point increase regarding uh, did they learn something out of the 45 minute discussion? Uh, again, the module in the material use, we covered areas such as salt use, application rates, sand use, temperature impacts on these materials. So that kind of covered the pilot sessions and how they went. Um, Ann, I'm not sure if you want to add anything. You were one of the active people that were in each session. Uh, any response regarding the audience or? Well, we did add, we did tell people about Clear Roads and what the overall project was. And there was a lot, I would, we did not measure this, so you'll have to believe my anecdotal uh, relay of information that people wanted to know what the other units were. I had a separate handout that told people what all the units were, all the modules were, when they'd be available. Uh, they wanted to know if they would be able to use them right away. So the energy and interest was pretty high. Uh, just as a note, the last two modules, Jim showed you where the numbers were lower. That was on day two of the, of the conference. And so that's why our numbers were lower. But we still had really high energy. The thing I liked is because we had a broad um, distribution of experience in the room, Kathy did a good job of using the slides to generate discussion. She left some of those test questions in there. And she was really able to get some best practices out of the um, participants there who had a lot of experience and she was also able to get some people to ask questions. So I thought it was really good in terms of a discussion uh, motivator. Yeah, and last thing I'll add to sum this up regarding the pilot presentations is uh, the audience. I mentioned it earlier, the audience that comes to this event are the maintenance workers that help uh, fight the snow in our state. And I want to say that the breakdown of who was in that room was maybe 25% DOT personnel, mm -hmm. and then the other 75% were probably uh, city or county workers because um, they're the, well, the large population that does come to this event. So we were able to share this information um, with multiple levels of agencies, big city, small city, 
small county, large county, Minnesota DOT. Yeah, and I need to add one more thing. Jim just reminded me that there was a township person there who she had never uh, been experiencing or exposed to anything relating to stone ice control. She attended all four sessions, but on the second, third, and fourth session, she brought other people with her. So she was, I would say, desperate for information and was really excited about this product. And I think that's one uh, target audience we hadn't really thought about that's going to be very effectively reached with this information. And I recognize that the Clear Roads program is a pool fund program. I know it's funded by the DOT, and I know the large audience here is the DOTs across the uh, snow part, snow belt of the U.S., and that's obviously the number one audience. But there's a lot of great information here that, you know, if Clear Roads can find a way to share it with other people, you know, there's going to be a huge impact on um, the way people maintain their roads across that snow belt region of the U.S. A couple of lessons learned. Uh, we'll, we'll briefly, there's probably a lot, but we kind of talked about four here. One is the Number one, need to develop a specific and formal review process. For those that are on the call with us today that were part of the review process, I just, we can't thank you enough for the patience and, and the thoughtfulness you put into the reviews, both with uh, Connie, uh, with, uh, with, our, with Ann and myself. Uh, the, the, the review process for something like this probably wasn't well thought out ahead of time and, and could have been thought out in a better way and different uh, tools or resources could be used to uh, help the review process is a little confusing sometimes. That kind of leads into the improve the scheduling to ensure that all comments are received and reconciled before being incorporated into the materials. Again, this the review process for something this large was very uh, was very complicated and very uh, tough to to incorporate everything as well as define what really should be reviewed and how much should be put into these products because we're trying to hit a common denominator of the people that attend these sessions. You know, how detailed do you get? How specific do you get into some of this stuff? And again, you're trying to cover, uh, you know, 34, 35 different states that have a wide variety of uh, uh, geography and weather and materials that are used and equipment, et cetera. So just lots of things that were um, we had to jump over to, to do a review of this. Could uh, better information sharing with uh, Clear Roads. Uh, we used something called Net Files for those that were part of this that we uploaded stuff to. It was a place to put stuff for people to look at, to use, to share, to take away, and maybe even use before the project was done. We were able to share that stuff with you, and maybe some of you used that already during your training season. And that was it worked. However, uh, I think there were some hurdles regarding sharing that information with net files and moving forward, you know, as Clear Roads and other PIs and other teams work on stuff, you know, what is the right way to share information to get um, proper review and so forth. Something this big where it's not just a report, you know, we basically had 22 separate reports with 20, with seven different things for each of those 22 modules, so just lots of stuff to review. Then last, you know, is there a formal template for the products? The, 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 the template that you see right now on the screen for our PowerPoint, that's the template that we have. You know, is there a, something? And then we have a very just generic Word document for all the other documents. That way, I guess, agencies can add stuff to it. They can add their logos to it. They can change it. But is there a need for a, some type of formal template for, for Clear Roads products? Other ideas moving forward, we think there's a, a place for an annual review of these materials. Uh, obviously, I'm not sure, I don't know who would do that, but just from an um, accuracy standpoint and from a clarity standpoint, and the fact that there's a variety of links to videos and, and webs and whatnot and web addresses, I don't know if that's the responsibility of Clear Roads to keep that up to date or if it's just the responsibility of the instructor from each individual agency to to own that, but there could be a place to uh, review this material annually to make sure that it's accurate. Another thing is the annual marketing of the available products to Clear Road member states in that July-August time frame. So is there a way to share this information as well as all the other new stuff that comes out in a way? My guess is Clear Roads and CTC is already doing this and, 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 and MnDOT, but just wanted to uh, share that thought. 
Uh, there, there is something called the Local Technical Assistance Programs, and I mentioned that that's kind of a, a program I work with here in our state. I know there's one in every state. A lot of them deal with the local units of government. I know some of them provide training to their state DOT. So if applicable and when applicable, I guess, you know, getting this information, I know, out into the hands of that LTEP community would really be beneficial. But I know there also is um, questions on how far Clear Roads wants to share this stuff, who they share it with. But I know the local agency, the LTAP program, has a, a mission of delivering great training to uh, to the locals and even state DOTs within their jurisdiction. And then, is there an annual training webinar for Clear Roads members? You know, similar to what we're doing right now on this topic. You know, maybe again, I, you might be doing this, but you know, is there a need or a place where where uh, there's an annual webinar that again is for the trainers that are doing winter maintenance training and is there a way for Clear Roads to do that moving forward and you know that that's something that I know that uh Ann and myself and Connie would be happy to be part of if that was the case. Um but we definitely think there's a need no matter what just to have a some type of training webinar available. Things that are left for us to complete. Um we do have a final report and we've made we need to make some changes to it based on the last couple months worth of work. Uh, we have these uh Last modules titled Supervisors of Winter Maintenance, Getting Ready for Winter, and Driver's Education that need to be just finalized from a, a quick overview. And then submit files to clear roads. And just to recap, uh, there are, like I said, there's 22 different modules. Um, the uh, record keeping module that was talked about throughout this project um, is a separate module, so that's one of the 22. However, we did incorporate record keeping into, I think, about 17 or 18 of the other 21 modules. And we have a lot of files, and that's what we can maybe clarify too is, you know, what exactly do you want? Because we can get you the files that have record keeping in them. We also can give you all the the powerpoints from before that don't have the record keeping in them but that again to get in all those types of files it becomes kind of confusing and, and we want to make sure that uh you know it meets the, the need and purpose of the clear roads program with that on behalf of uh Fortin, who is not here with us and county and her staff and the university of minnesota and Anne and myself just uh thank you for the time and commitment you guys made to this and i think at the end of the day even though it took quite a many days to get here, it, uh, and we have some great products that can help uh, the DOTs across the snow area, snow belt region. So thank you again, Clear Roads and CTC and all those that were part of this. Thank you, Jim and and, and uh, very much for your uh, presentation today and um, I, our our uh, makeshift system of everybody muting themselves on their own end work, work perfectly. Um, and there still are a number of folks that are still, uh, that are on the line here. Although no, no questions other than Tom's clarification of something uh, that you had clarified being the fact that the most of the presenters there, or most of the attendees at the expo were city and county folks. Uh, other than that, there's no other questions in here. So, um, I just say right now, if people have any questions, go ahead and, and feel free to unmute your lines and 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 uh, ask away. Um, the I was curious about on the the program. Will this be like available on the Clear Roads website? So we'll just have to go out the website and download module at a time, or yeah, to be able to upgrade it to you know, make it to what we want to use it for in our DOT. Right. So that's. Uh, obviously, that was something that Jim brought up too, how we were going to handle that. We've had some discussions on that in the past, um, and I think where we left it at the last meeting was that what we wanted to do was, since this is a Clear Roads project paid for by the Clear Roads states, we wanted to house it on the Clear Roads website, I believe under the members only location, so that only Clear Roads um, representatives and, and member states could access those files. However, our interest was to provide those to uh, other winter maintenance people outside the Clear Roads community, but what we wanted to do is to control that uh, because there's certain things that we want to make sure that are, you know, happening um, when those uh, files or when those um, modules are being presented, that training is being presented. 
um, such as giving proper credit to clear roads and this kind of thing. But also, we want to know who's doing it and how they're uh, how they're using it, so we can track, you know, the, um, the just the implementation of the technical transfer of this material. So I think what we're going to do uh, something I think uh, one of the members had suggested it may have been Justin that was to um, have a form that needs to be filled out by anybody uh, requesting the information. So I think it would probably be something that the Clear Roads administrator would uh, would manage that process, have them fill out the form, get any necessary approvals, and then send it out, uh, give them, uh, send it out to them in some form, maybe put them on another uh, neutral site where they can access to grab a particular module at one at a time kind of thing. So it's going to be, again, it's, it's to summarize, I think it, we want it, obviously it's accessible to all clear road states, we want it available to other people, but we want to control that process. Hey, sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Cliff Spoonmore asked, was there any follow-up questions from the participants after the lesson or after the class in the hallway? Yes, there was quite a few. People wanted, but it wasn't, uh, at me they wouldn't have necessarily directed technical questions, so I can't say that Kathy didn't have anything like that, although actually I think she did. Um, for me, it was more about how do I get more information. Um, now that I think about it, there was quite a bit of discussion on, on during, after the truck one, there was quite a bit of discussion on um, just amongst the participants and amongst Kathy themselves on cleaning procedures and different things that might be added to a truck. But I, 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 that's all anecdotal, and I can just tell you that there was quite a bit of conversation, but I don't remember exactly what some of the questions were. Okay. No more questions in the chat box. Does anybody else have any other questions you want to ask? Uh, go ahead and ask them. Just go ahead and you don't have to put them in the chat uh, chat box anymore. This, this Tom Peters calling calling in right now. Can you hear me? Okay. I just unmuted yeah. myself. Okay. Just a little FYI. Um, this did this project did get a little bit of exposure yesterday as well in in the Minnesota area uh, at our annual Salt Symposium. Uh, meeting that uh, County Fort and always MCs, and she kind of brought it up. I was presenting on clear roads in general to the audience. Uh, they were asked me to do that, and so this project was discussed uh, and brought out there as well. So I do think uh, uh, some people were interested in, in hearing about that and some of the other projects. So I do think it's going to gain traction for us as well. So heads up there. Great, thanks, Tom. All right, well, thank you again, everybody. I really appreciate you joining in. As uh, um, Jim said, thank you so much for all of your contributions to this research effort. It was a huge uh, deal, and uh, but I think it's going to be monumentally uh, uh, beneficial to uh, all of our states and, and, the, and the folks that are, uh, you know, at the city and county level, too, and within those states. So really, really pleased with this effort. Um, Again, we will be posting this. It's been recorded. It will be posted on the website, and I will send out a notification to everybody so that you know. And thanks again, Jim, and it's much appreciated. Have a great day, everybody.